First, I need to rip my kitchen lights out to make this thing. Just kidding. Instead, I found these four temperature adjustable can lights from a local reseller for cheap. First up is a quick teardown. The specs on the four lights are a 2700 to 5000 K temperature range. Combined total of 28.4 watts across the LEDs and 2500 lumens and a CRI rating of 94. I wanted an upgrade from those sad rainy day umbrella light sets you get from Amazon. They're the ones that just disassemble if you look at them wrong. This project contains the power supply and controls, the back panel, the LED drivers, the heat sink and fan, and the LEDs and the diffuser. Next up, I just have to print out the parts in my design. We will come back to some assembly after we cut the aluminum heat sink and do some wiring. For the heatsink, I had a piece of aluminum from a previous project where I built parts for CNC. On the back, I will mount this 12 volt fan that will be embedded into the fins of the heatsink. On the flip side will be four LED boards I got from the can lights. These will also be thermal pasted and screwed in. All I need to do is pop it on the CNC and watch it run. This took about 20 minutes to cut. Uh, very conservative on the cutting as this machine is really only meant for softer materials, but it does the job. The heatsink is nowhere near ideal as the fins are large, thus reducing performance. But one, I was impatient and didn't want to babysit the CNC for very long. And two, the lights in the original housing are already passively cooled and don't require much additional cooling. So I should be fine there. After cutting, I deburr and sand away all the imperfections. Later I move from 120 to 200, 500, and 1200 grit wet sanding. The latter for better heat transfer between the LED board and the heat sink. Once sanding is complete, I tapped all the required holes in the part per my design. You can see each T denoted as required for tapping. I use a 5mm coarse thread tap. Seems like a lot of tapped holes, but almost all are necessary. Six are for the LED boards, four are for the back housing to mount, and two are for the front uh, plate. After these are tapped, I will start on the main logical part of the project. So I basically need to take each LED driver and parallel them together to control temperature across all of the LEDs but at the same time separating the power draw to their respective boards as to not overload any of the circuits. Seen here is the temperature adjustment switch that will eventually be connected to each driver in parallel. Then I just bend and solder the tabs on. This was really tedious doing this with four sets of LEDs. Not shown, but after soldering these wires in place, I put a generous glob of hot glue to fix everything in place. After that, I cram everything back into the housing and soldering it to the next driver. Again, hot gluing like a madman. Then smash them together and repeat again for the other two drivers to make one alpha stack. These thicker wires are for the main power that goes into the lighting. The other side of these plugs would be your standard screw and bulb with the orange connector on back. Not fully shown, but I soldered all of these leads together because they will get the same 120 volt coming in. And now back to the heat sink where I apply the LEDs. I use standard CPU thermal paste from a computer build I did last year. 
I route the LED wiring in a through hole I designed into the plate itself. I do this for the remaining LEDs, then mount a diffuser housing type thing in after. I always seem to struggle with naming conventions on these builds. Once those are in place, I move on to the fan side. Same procedure as last time, thermal paste and M3 screws to secure them down. I had to shave these screws because I did not have different links available. They were interfering with the LED boards on the reverse side, but quick fix. I then had to get 12 volts to the fan. As there was only one incoming voltage, which was 120, I used a small step down converter to go from 120 volts down to 12. Here I am soldering the larger AC voltage lines and the smaller 12 volt red and black wires. As you will see later, this will fit neatly in the power module when I get there. I also had to solder and heat sink uh, cable extensions to get from the 12 volt to the power module. I route the LED wires through the next 3D printed part. This is a fan shroud with small cutouts that line up with the heat sink to dissipate heat out into the air. Here I am doing a quick sanity check of the 12 volt fan before I begin assembly. The 12 volt fan converter gets mounted into the power module towards the front. I use hot glue to set it in position. Now this was the second most tedious part. I have to solder each LED board to their respective drivers. After soldering, I heat sink and neatly organize the leads so that they can be inserted into the main housing of the LED drivers. Now this was a tight fit. I knew it would go in, but not without some force. This black wire is the main AC wires that go to all LED drivers. I have to organize these wires so that the two parts meet without crimping anything. A small oversight on my design was using threaded rod. Although everything was neat and fit in nicely, getting the rod to align and mate the two parts was tricky. Shown here is the temperature adjustment daisy chain to each driver. I add four more rods to secure and tighten down with M3 nuts. And finally a test before moving on to the power module. Here I am just cutting off the excess threaded rod. The board I am installing here is the PWM controller for brightness. I just wanted to have a nice dial for getting low light shots as well as max brightness and everything in between.
Next up is soldering the power switch and standard AC plug connection. Cramming everything in here was a challenge, but we made it happen. Not a great angle, but I connected the 12 volt fan AC line into the switch. So when power is on, the fan automatically turns on. But I did not connect it to the PWM controller as the fan is quiet and I just wanted it to run 100% always. I connect the AC cable from the driver into the PWM controller. And finally, connect the fan itself to the 12 volt voltage controller. I press in M3 nuts to connect the power module to the LED driver housing. I'm using a soldering iron to melt it into the PLA. Terrible angle again, but this is the PWM knob for brightness control. Almost ready to go, just putting the final touches in. Here I thought adding in aluminum foil tape would help reflect more light forward. I should have done a before and after comparison, but I'll just imagine it helped. This is a quarter 20 nut for mounting to standard size camera tripod and such. I need a cover plate for the LEDs so nobody gets zapped unnecessarily. I'm just using 8 inch cast acrylic for this. Since this is a budget build, I opted for using translucent parchment paper as the diffuser for the LEDs. This will most likely be temporary though because I intend to have additional films to go over top of the acrylic. This will include colored film as well as different translucent diffusers. And finally it's done. Here is a CRI test for my old setup and new. My old setup used fluorescence, which I think has a lower CRI. The new LED light is definitely a bigger improvement as far as color accuracy, which is great. In addition to color accuracy, I love the added benefit of changing up the lighting temperature on the fly to get a nice warm inviting shot and a cool dramatic shot. I think this is gonna up my game drastically. Overall, I think this project went well. 
As a beginner in videography, I know this setup will help me create better looking videos in the future, and I'm looking forward to it. Thank you so much for watching. Consider a like, sub if you haven't, or even comment below to let me know how I did and ways I can improve this project.